Well, our next item sort of starts like one of those old jokes. The Jewish rabbi, Protestant reverend, and Muslim scholar team up. But in this case, it's to write a book titled How Millennials Can Lead Us Out of the Mess We're In. A Jew, a Muslim, and a Christian share leadership lessons from the life of Moses. Well, no, this is not a joke. It's serious business indeed. But maybe it's a little funny that the authors themselves are not quite millennials, in fact, far from it. And they're drawing inspiration from a biblical figure that many in their target audience may be a little less than familiar with. But certainly this is an age that might need some miracles of leadership. Well, joining us now from Manhattan, Kansas, is the Reverend Ian Case Punnett, an Episcopal deacon, American radio broadcaster, and a Moses and Leadership Scholar from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Rabbi Mordechai Schreiber, author and Moses and Leadership Scholar, and from Washington, D.C., Iqbal J. Yunus. He is also an author and Moses and Leadership Scholar. Gentlemen, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Reverend, I'm going to start with you. How did this unlikely trio come together to work, uh, or just come together, but then to work together to work on this project? Well, we were golfing. And uh, no, I'm kidding. We uh, had <laughs> never joke, actually. But never mind. Yeah, I know. And we had never actually even met in person, except for me and Dr. Yunus, um, which was only because I was in my PhD program with his daughter. Uh, and but the uh, he brought the idea of doing a book about leadership based on the life of Moses for a younger audience that ordinarily doesn't attend any house of worship. And we felt like the leadership lessons from Moses were not only valuable to discuss, but also very relevant to millennials, because as we argue, in a lot of ways, Moses may have been the first on-record millennial. If we look at the characteristics of what makes a millennial, uh, Moses fits right in. Well, I'm going to ask Dr. Yunus to pick up that point. Uh, why would Moses, uh, I, you know, be a millennial, uh, Dr. Yunus? I mean, he uh, certainly lived a long time. Maybe he lived close to millennia, a couple of millennia ago. Why would he be a millennial today? Well, I mean, again, uh, we looked at the life uh, and the work of uh, Moses, and we found many con uh, common elements. One of the most important one being humor, being humble, his humility, uh, the ability to uh, serve. You know the whole concept of servant leadership. The leaders, the leaders serve people, not people serve leaders. And the uh, idea that he had uh, both experiences. He had an experience in the opulence of the palace, an experience in the wilderness of the you know the, the being a shepherd. And 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 so we put these things together, and we see that. Millennials are looking for challenges that make sense to them. They are not looking for just, you know, uh, gather a lot of money and become big. But how can they serve? How can they be meaningful in, in, in people's life? And we thought that those things uh, uh, sort of come together in the life of Moses. And we also uh, had this idea that uh, his is a message that is common to the three Abrahamic faiths. And that was an attraction, a point of attraction also. Well, Rabbi Shabbat, let's talk about some of the specific challenges that millennials are facing. I mean, the two very obvious ones, we see in the U.S. sort of racial unrest sweeping that country, and that reflects, I think, a tribalism, a growing tribalism we see across, really, the globe, and, of course, the threat posed by the coronavirus, and I guess the alienating effect it is also having on society, isolating individuals. So why would the traits that Dr. Yunus described of Moses be relevant specifically in helping millennials emerge from those challenges? Well, because... Um, millennials, of course, you can't generalize. They're right-wing and left-wing millennials, I suppose, and in between. But um, as a general rule, it appears that millennials uh, take diversity and multiculturalism as a natural thing. They don't have to declare. You know, when we had the Black Lives Matter demonstrations, a lot of millennials and of all races and all creeds participated. They believe in, in unity, in, in people getting together, which is very critical in today's world. And uh, we go back to the Moses story in the Bible. 
When he took the Israelites out of Egypt, he also took the Erev Rav, which is translated multitude of different people from other places, not just Jews, not just Hebrews. And so you have inc inclusiveness already back then in the Exodus. And um, as uh, Dr. Yunus said, Moses' greatest characteristic in the Bible, he was described as the most humble of all people. And humility in a leader seems to be a major, major requirement. Right. Well, let me ask you that on that question of humility, Reverend. Uh, no one in this conversation is, is actually quite a millennial, maybe a little far from it. So uh, why should millennials be listening to the advice of a generation? They might say, well, screw things up pretty badly. And now you're, 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 putting a, you're bringing out somebody who, uh, uh, an example that maybe meant a lot more to your generations and then to ours. Well, remember, too, Moses was a late starter. You know, if we can look at a characteristic of millennials, it's they were kind of in no hurry. Uh, they're not they were less in a hurry to get driver's licenses or to move away from home. Or, this was very much the Moses story. And he kind of had greatness thrust upon him uh, by the circumstances. And his first reaction was to reach out to others um, to create a kind of coalition moving forward. And I think that's something very much that perhaps millennials didn't even realize is relevant because many of them at a higher percentage in society aren't going to you know, participating in religion, at, uh, you know, formally, especially in terms of education. I work with millennials every day. I work with Gen Z every day. And I think that this is where looking for models of leadership, it doesn't matter who's proposing it. It doesn't matter that we're arguing it. It's either true or it's not. And we argue that it is. To get out from underneath authoritarianism requires the ability to take on bigger responsibility. And I think that's what um, millennials are being called to do. And if they take that mantle, just like it was being offered to Moses, and if they accept that, then they can lead all of us, the whole world, out of this intergenerational conflict where it seems like baby boomers are holding on to power harder and harder with every passing year. They don't want to give it up. And part of the argument in the book is it's time for baby boomers to look to millennials to be the ones to deliver us to the promised land. Dr. Yunus, I think many, for many non-Muslims, it may come as a surprise how big a role uh, the Hebrew Bible and the figures contained in it, like Moses, play in the Islamic tradition, in the Quran. I wonder, uh, and especially this at a time in the U.S., uh, when the role of Muslims in society is one has been one that is really uh, a lot, there's quite a bit at stake there. What do you think the book specifically offers readers, young readers, especially young American readers, about what come what the humanistic values of the Isla the Muslim tradition, the Islamic faith, as expressed in this uh, leadership lesson from Moses? I think the first thing that uh, we need to realize and and Muslims probably respond to this book, uh, you know, as enthusiastic as anybody else, is that Moses is a very much uh, an Islamic prophet, so to say. Uh, the From the Quranic perspective, you see a series of prophets that are uh, common to uh, the, uh, the Jews and the Christians and, and Muslims. Uh, Moses is actually one that really is most common in terms of the uh, narration in each of the uh, uh, the books in the Quran, especially uh, Moses' story is covered in many chapters and is the most detailed story in different places in the Quran. Even more uh, mention of Moses than uh, the Prophet Muhammad. So that's one thing that the uh, the Moses story is uh, very familiar to Muslims and Jews and Christians, and it's a common thread. It's a common thread, and that, in fact, also brings us together in that sense that uh, we can all identify with that story. The other thing also is that uh, from a Quranic perspective, and I think all, all faith perspectives, uh, our books are, the divine books are, are books of guidance. And when we look for guidance, we look for guidance in the messengers that God sent, because that's how he sent guidance, and the messengers were actually demonstrating and practicing guidance. 
And so we look at the, and that's why we tell people today, they look, if you're looking for guidance, it's not a question of it is contemporary or is it ancient. Right. If it's ancient and if it comes from God himself directly, then it has value. And you should learn from that ancient wisdom that is timeless, uh, as opposed to simply you know, rejecting it as if it's something of the old. It is not something of the old. It's something that is timeless. Uh, so the, these two things come come together, and the, uh, as I said again, the common thread is a very important thing. Well, let's talk about the common thread, Rabbi Schreiber. You know, I'm speaking to you from Israel. I'm sure you're aware that because of uh, political uh, considerations and maybe, let's say, historic, cultural considerations, this kind of cross-religious or cross-faith project is would be a little unusual and maybe would face certain challenges. So talk about how you see the value just as, as a cross-faith collaboration this particular project is, especially centering around a figure who's primarily associated with the Jewish tradition, Moses. Okay, um, you know, as we speak, there are new peace initiatives in the Middle East with between Israel and Bahrain and Israel, the United Arab Emirates. But here's the problem. These new uh, agreements that we have are based on sales of uh, advanced weapons. They are ba based on economic reasons. They do nothing for the common heritage and common beliefs of Israelis, Jews in general, Arabs, Muslims, and so on. So what you have in the, what, what you continue to have in the Middle East, and I, by the way, I'm, I'm a native of Israel. I was there when Israel was born. I'm older than Israel. And I know the Palestinians and, and the Arab world very, very well. What this book does, and that's what makes it so important, and is that it it uh, it shows, perhaps for the first time, to my knowledge, how our three traditions are interconnected. It's not just about oil, or money, or military uh, goods. It's about our common heritage, which should bring us together after centuries of conflict, and teach us once and for all, perhaps starting with the millennial and the following generations, that a time has come on this planet, which is small and fragile, for all of us to come together. Israel, the state of Israel needs it desperately. It's a small country, no matter how militarily strong right. and scientifically advanced, it needs the Arab world, not just as for these kind of deals, right? but for better understanding. I can see this book in Israel, in the Arab world, and in the Christian well, well, world. Well, 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 we'll, ha we'll, we'll have to leave it at that, gentlemen. But of course, we just came out of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, a time of renewal. And this certainly sounds like a fitting project uh, for a fresh new start. Uh, Reverend Ian Case Punit. Uh, Rabbi Mordechai Schreiber and Dr. Iqbal J. Yunus, thank you for joining us on I-24 News.